Welcome back. In this chapter, we will learn how to tune the data read operation in Apache Spark. When I say data read, I mean whenever you are doing a Spark dot read operation, you are reading data from the storage layer. Or in Spark SQL, whenever you are doing select some columns from a table, you are reading data from the storage layer. Data read in Spark is one of the essential and the first activity. No matter what is your business logic, what data processing you are going to do, everything starts from reading data from the storage layer. You read data from the storage layer and then you do whatever transformation or data crunching you want to do. So tuning the data read operation is one of the essential and the first level of performance tuning activity in Apache Spark. If you can read data efficiently, you are already done half of your tuning work. Rest of the query you can tune later, but you have to make sure that you are reading data in the most efficient manner. You are reading data fast enough. So that's what we are going to learn in this chapter. We will focus on the data read operation. Let me quickly walk you through what all the things we are going to learn in this chapter. So uh, I've listed six, seven things here. The first thing is we will learn about the caching scenario how you can cache data and when you should cache data and how caching improves your data read operation. So we will learn about caching. And then the next most important idea is to read only what you need, right? You should not be reading the entire data and then using only one fraction of that data that you are reading. So the idea is to read only what you need, read the minimum possible data. And under that idea, we will learn three things. One, how do you eliminate those columns that you don't need? So we will learn about column elimination. How do you eliminate those rows that you don't need? So we will learn about row elimination. Any data set or a table is structured as columns and rows, right? So if we want to minimize the data read operation, we have to minimize the number of columns that we are going to read. Similarly, we will have to minimize the number of rows that we are going to read. So how to do that? We will learn that in this chapter. And then we will also learn how you can cripple your read operation. So idea is how you minimize number of columns and number of rows that you are going to read. But what are the mistakes that you can make and still read the entire data set or all the rows. So we will learn how you can avoid those crippling of your read operation. And then we will learn about scan overhead. Scan overhead is the overhead attached to uh, scanning the number of files and directories on your storage layer. So what is a scan overhead? We will learn about that and how to avoid that. We also learn about that. A small file is also uh, additional overhead. If you have so many small, small files, 10,000, 20,000 small files, then maybe uh, your application is going or suffering from the overhead attached to the small uh, files. We will learn what is a small file overhead and how to handle that. We will uh, also understand that. Uh, next thing is your search queries. So whenever you are reading data, maybe you are applying some where condition and trying to search some specific records from the entire table, right? So how do you tune your search queries? What are the partitioning required for tuning your search queries? What indexing options do we have? How to use these uh, techniques to optimize your search queries and how to mix in these two things, uh, partitioning and indexing, all those also we will learn in this uh, chapter. Then once you read data from the storage layer, data comes and sits into the Spark memory and it sits as partitions, data frame partitions. So what is the number of partitions that you are going to create after reading data? What is the size of each partition? What is the best uh, size that you should go for? How to tune that portion, how that impacts your uh, data read operations and operations further that we will learn in this uh, chapter. There is something called file open cost. So every data file that Spark is going to open and read from your storage layer has some additional cost of read operation, opening file and closing file and all those things. They have an attached cost uh, to the file operation. So how to tune that and how does that impact and all that we will learn in this chapter. So basically I have listed seven, eight things here. And all these things we will be learning through scenarios. So I have nine to 10 scenarios set up uh, for you in this chapter. We'll go with the scenarios, uh, what problem team is facing and what kind of uh, observation they have. And then we start from there, how to identify those problems, how to pinpoint those problems, how to navigate through Spark UI and investigate your uh, Spark application or queries or Spark jobs. And then how to figure out which problem out of these 
data read problems we are facing and then how do we implement the test how do we benchmark before how do we benchmark after that's what we are going to learn in this chapter so basically you will be going through 9 to 10 scenarios all specific to data read operations and along the way you will be learning how to investigate through spark ui from the concept perspective i have listed down 10 concepts that you will be learning in this chapter uh, if you already know these concepts or little bit familiar with these concepts that's great you will be able to make much more sense of what we are doing here but even if you are not very familiar or not very clear about these concepts uh, you will still benefit from this course and possibly you will learn more about these concepts these concepts will be clear crystal clear to you during this uh, chapter so what are these concepts uh, spark memory uh, caching versus disk caching, columnar file formats, predicate push down, partition pruning, partitioning and over partitioning of your data on the disk, metadata correction, uh, small file problems, how to optimize the small files and how to take care of the small, small file problems. What is the optimal file size? How do you determine should you create 100 MB files or 1 GB or 10 GB files? What is Z order indexing? How to use it? When to use it? How to mix it in with the partitioning? When to use partitioning? When not to use partitioning? And when to use uh, Z order indexing? All that concept should be crystal clear to you in this chapter. So a lot to learn. I'll see you in the lectures. Keep learning and keep growing. Mm -hmm.